Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another software architecture in Go video. In today's episode, I'm going to be discussing with you security, specifically when dealing with dependencies. So security is a huge and complex topic. I'm stating the obvious right there. And we as developers, we should really care about it. Now, in this video, like I said, I'm going to be talking only about dependencies. If you want to get more uh, details about, for example, cloud security and those kind of things, there are there is this nice, nice uh, book called Practical Cloud Security, released in 2019 and written by Chris Dodson. Uh, feel free to check it out. I will be leaving the link in the description. So specifically about dependencies, we are going to be uh, adding a few things to the different projects that I have in my uh, GitHub uh, account, my GitHub profile. This involves uh, includes the one, obviously, the two microservices that we have, we have been using for examples and a few other tools that I read in the past um that i have written in the past and you can you can refer to those as well as, as you always the links will, will be in the description so we're going to be covering uh, dependencies regarding the standard library dependencies obviously third-party packages i'm not covering dependencies in the context of the services that we use for that add a value to our own service examples will be data stores or maybe um uh, things that we use for storing uh, passwords or maybe uh, the, the tools that we use for content containerization or uh, building and deployment those kind of things so that is again yes it's a dependency but for this video i'm focusing on those two in particular yeah there are going to be a few examples that touch a few of them but that's because of the service that i'm going to be showing you so i'm saying service too much time too much yeah service too much but don't worry about it I, I will show you the concrete examples okay now dependencies are going to be using github actions and github uh, you don't have to use github actions if you don't happen to use github obviously you cannot use github options but you can use any uh, any continuous integration service that you you want to use in the past when i cover maintainability i was mentioning circle ci jenkins ci um uh i'm missing one uh, GitLab CI, obviously, and there are even more more than that. But you can use any any CI that you want to use. The important things that I want to discuss and want to show you are the different tools that are mostly available in any circle in any continuous integration service. So we have Dependabot, which is a tool for uh, upgrading the version of your packages automatically. Uh, we have this linter called GoSec. We have this uh, service called Snick. We have this. Uh, service integration thing that is added to github called code ql and finally we have a tool that i wrote that is called versions for determining we're giving you um like what versions are you using in different go projects that happen to be using go modules all right so let's jump into the code and i will show you i will walk you through each one of the tools that i just mentioned Dependabot is the first tool I want to show you. It's a service that is integrated with GitHub, but you can also use with GitLab, for example. You need to configure it in a different way, and it is more or less equivalent to what GitHub offers you. Now, what happens with this one in particular, I'm using the videos, not the videos, but sorry, the versions project that I have here, and I just added this YAML file. This is not, not a workflow um, in the context of GitHub Actions, therefore it's not testing or running any projects. Uh, or building our binaries or, or whatnot. It's just literally running another step in the GitHub Actions pipeline. So what is this happening is that every time I push a code, uh, it's going to be checking you, your Circle CI configuration, which I had here in my project. So I, I also have an integration with, Girl, with Circle CI in the versions uh, project, but I'm adding this GitHub dependency that is basically just checking the configuration is valid and every time uh, daily it will be checking my go mod if you notice it's doing i'm using the go mod it's checking in the path in the root path therefore it's going to be looking for this go mod file and then if there is a dependency that i have right here listed that has a new version available it will create a pull request that then i can merge automatically the whole point of this is that you as a, man as a maintainer you don't have to worry about checking the dependencies every now and then of the packages that you use. So for example, if you go to my pull request in the Todo microservice, uh, you will notice that I have a few of them open for the open telemetry package. Because I just pushed these two versions, I don't have anything just yet, but it's most likely tomorrow or in a few hours or whatever the case may be, we, I will be seeing more pull requests. Now, 
The important thing about this, like I said, is just a pull request. It, it runs your integration, that, the configuration that you have. And if it builds, it builds. If it doesn't, it will fail. Like you, like you see right here, the open telemetry in this case, it broke some of the API. So it's not building correctly. So it won't merge until you let it, uh, you, you, until you do it manually. That's what I'm trying to say. Now, I will be leaving the link to the configuration of all of this in the description so you can check it out. So let's jump into the second tool that I want to show you. The next tool will be GoSec. It's a security linter that is included in the Golang CI linter. So every time, if you happen to be using this meta linter, it will be running that configuration as well. This is really cool because there are cases where you also can make some mistakes when writing Go. And although the services that I'm going to be showing afterwards can also detect these errors, this is a nice thing to have if you want to run it locally first. So it's really simple to enable you use if you again if you use golang ci you just make sure that it's enabled for example in my to do microservice configuration that i have right here i don't have it disabled therefore everything is enabled and with this gosec will also be enabled as well so again if i look at the github uh, workflow that i have for testing um running well rather not testing but in this case will be linting i'm calling the linter right here with the configuration that is coming from the golang ci file uh the yaml file and that's pretty much it i mean pretty straightforward nothing crazy to do and i highly recommend it to enable it as well let's jump into the next tool so we can continue with this video so the next one is called a sneak a sneak is an online service that you need to pay if you are using private repositories because i'm using an open source project which is a public which is also public in this case i don't have to pay anything for using their service what i did is i linked a sneak to my github account and i started adding projects so you go to add project select github and set, you add the projects that you want to add in this case i wanted to select the go projects that i built most recently which is neat videos versions and the two api microservice example i use most of the times so i'm going to refresh you this a little bit so we can see all the importation and uh, details that just happened uh, so we have the cool thing about this sneak in particular is that it's not only considering Go related dependencies like the standard library and third party packages, but also a few of the details that you may have related to, the, to your containerization like Docker files. And in some cases, it could also detect when you have um, some uh, like uh, credentials and whatnot. So let's look at NIT, for example. So you have NIT. I have a few issues there is no code analysis issue which will be in cases when you have like i said credentials and, and those kind of things secure strings and things that should usually be do using in the first place or rather pushing it or adding it to your repository repository or repository or hard coding those there somehow now we have the docker file and obviously my go mod uh, manager that we, uh, we are using for managing dependencies in go so i want to show you the docker file first so you can see that it's really cool because it allows you to determine depending on the image that you're using it determines the issues that are coming in that image and you can actually create uh, and fix it via uh, a pull request using the user interface a sneak also allows you to automatically create a pull requests as soon as those are detected so that's another nice cool thing to have in your uh, automatic integration when you push any code you don't have to have GitLab CI or any CI integration or GitHub actions or whatever because this is integrated directly to your GitHub repository so every time you push something there is a communication between a sneak and GitHub and they handle all those details to determine if you need to change something okay so what I'm going to be doing right now I'm going to open a new merge request to fix the issue with the docker file and if you notice, you just, I mean, just click a bunch of things. And what it's going to be doing is we're going to be trying to open the pull request. And there it is. So there is a new pull request that indicates all the issues that I found just now running the tool. And it will say, it will again run my continuous integration, which in the case of NIT is using Circle CI. And obviously, it's also using the integration with the SNIC. Now, the changes that are going to be added is most, like you said, <laughs> you just add in the or upgrading the version from 1.14 for 1.14.0 to 0.13 using alpine 3.11 really cool right now the other cool thing about the sneak is that like i said it detects you know the dependencies and also the code analysis and i have that one here it's a low in this case because <laughs> 
it's just one of those things because I'm using this as an example. It says I'm coding a credential, but rather I'm just not doing that. It's just an example in this case. And now if I see the file, you will notice that it's in the vault test uh, file. So we can ignore that one for now. It's not a biggie. Uh, but it's really cool because you can detect those errors right here. Now, one important thing that I, I didn't mention before, before, but I want to mention it right here, which is not part of a snake really, but it's more part of the security integration that GitHub has, is this way to detect vulnerabilities in our dependencies. Now, with a sneak, if I go back to the page, you will notice that that in particular, that one was not detected. It was only detected the one, what happened right here? Okay. <clears throat> So if I go to my projects, I, I click the microservice, you will notice that that one was not detected anywhere, uh, but the GitHub security did detect that one. So first of all, how do you enable security? You go to your settings, you click security and analysis, and you enable all of these buttons and all of these options. <clears throat> With that, what happens is that it will give you security updates, like this one in, in particular, that is saying, hey, container D has an issue. So we need to check it out and update it. Now, container D, I believe, is coming from the Docker test Ori package, Ori Docker test package. So it should be okay to update that, that one as well. <clears throat> so if I go to my project locally and I do a go get, uh, let, let's update it to the li late, uh, latest because I don't think um, that should be a problem. So we do a go get update, remove all of these. We're going to be the pulling the latest version. Uh, we do a go mod tidy just to be safe. We do uh, go mod, go sum. Uh, we just make sure that we're building everything correctly. We do a go build, build everything. Uh, and then when this is finished, we can push this to remote and see what happens. So it looks like it's finished. So say upgrade. Uh, what is the name of this? Container D. We put the theme. And go mod tidy one more time just to be safe. Git push. Now, as soon as I push this, it says, Oh, GitHub found a vulnerability. And this is another cool thing about GitHub is that when you're pushing your code to remote, it will remind you that there is a vulnerability. Now, this is still referring to this one, but as soon as we deploy the code, you will notice that, you know, it went away because we are not using that version anymore. So it's going to be building, it's going to take in, it's going to be taking a while. So while this is building, let's jump into the next tool I want to show you. The next tool I want to show you is called CodeQL. This is another workflow that we can add to our GitHub action workflows that we have. So I just did that a while ago. It's uh, like I said, it's called CodeQL is using a uh, action right here that is coming from GitHub. It's an official action and this is actually a, um, a company that GitHub acquired, so that's why it integrates nicely. The cool thing about CodeQL, oopsie, the cool thing about CodeQL where is it? Where, where, did, where did my browser go? There you go. The cool thing about CodeQL is also part uh, of the security configuration tab. So you go to code scanning alerts. Let me show you one project that I don't have. <clears throat> doesn't have that enabled if i go to knit for example i go to settings uh, security and analysis i don't have this setup so if i click setup what is going to happen is going to send me to this page with uh, for adding the code ql analysis workflow which is what i added right here so this is a literally you know the copy that is coming directly from this workflow uh, and you can literally just follow the, the user interface and enable it by yourself. So CodeQL allows you to find errors in the code base according to configuration that is part uh, of the service itself. So it's a cool way to, f to allow another service to find vulnerabilities automatically on your services and projects it's a really cool nice integration the only problem with this is that um, if you want to use it for private repositories you need to use github enterprise and there is some monetary consideration that you have to think about it in in that case so let's jump into the last tool and then we will revisit everything one more time
So the last tool I want to show you is called version. This is something that I built for determining the versions that uh, the version, the packages versions that my projects use in order uh, to know if they need to be synchronized or updated or if they even using the same Go version. Now, this is something that I'm still working on it. It's not completed, but at least it can be useful for the following case. If you know, or maybe if you are not aware, Go maintains only up to the two most recent major releases. So for example, right now we are using 1.17. That means that 1.17 and 16 are only supported. 1.15 is sort of like no longer supported and everything below that will not get any security updates anymore so from all the tools that i show you i couldn't find that that allows you to detect that information and it becomes it became it, it becomes a little bit tricky because depending on the package or project that you're using maybe you are not using go mod or maybe if you're using go mod uh, you are again you're using an old version or maybe if you're using a uh, sort of like a uh, dependency management tool like go, go uh, like well what, what were the uh, go dev no it doesn't matter the tools before go mod uh, there is no way to determine what go version you're using specifically so it gets really tricky to determine what is the version of go that you're using for your project so this tool of called versions it needs 1.15 is the minimum requirement so it's you know getting a little bit tricky but the way it works it is that you pass in a path of the go mod file for each one of the projects for example right here i'm using the videos project and the to do microservice it will hold on let me uh, make it to example md it prints out a markdown file in this example so what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to just open the markdown mark, markdown file to show you i'm going to just copy all of these and I'm going to paste it in this online visualization called Dillinger. And what Dillinger is going to be doing, can I make this? There you go. I didn't want to do that. <clears throat> uh, let me make this a little bit better. And you will notice that in here, I have the versions for each one of the projects. In this case, there are two of them. 1.17 is the one that I'm using for the two microservice. 1.14 is the one that I'm using for this example that I called it old go so it would be a nice way to determine i still need to continue working on that versions uh, tool but maybe it could be useful for you for your project and your use case to determine if you're running a really old version that doesn't that is not getting any new security updates anymore so let's jump into the conclusions and i will give you my final thoughts so this is the video for securing dependencies in Go. I didn't cover uh, other security ways to secure your projects when you're using Go. I will be covering those in future episodes, so don't worry about it. Uh, remember, the key of this video is to give you an idea of things that you can add right now to your project that are automated, that you don't have to do too much to keep them working. Again, it depends on the services that you're using. Maybe you need to pay a license. Maybe you need to maintain some extra services behind the scenes to keep that service running. In case of the Pendabot, for example, you want you can run it. It's an open source project anyways, and you can run it locally on your own premises, but it still is something that you need to maintain. Now, the linters and those kind of things are the minimum things that you really need to add to protect your services uh, when you're dealing with external dependencies as well as internal ones related to the Go standard library. Uh, some of the services and again all of these will be linked in the description so you can check it out it allows you to also search for vulnerabilities uh, specific to packages in go and other programming languages although this is a go specific uh, video you can also uh, see other languages as well so i hope you found this useful as always any comment please let me know i will talk to you next time and take care see you